Yo, what's good guys? Have a requested video today going over some of the discourse in the community about um, you know, how to set up a god squad and the crazy captain boosts that are available in game right now and the price that some of those are running people at. Um, but before we get into it, I want to thank all you guys for 2,500 subs. Um, by the time you see this video, we're close to 2,600. Uh, the support has been crazy on the channel. Uh, and honestly, you know, I haven't even been putting out my usual content. We've been missing a day here and there. Uh, it hasn't been a tier list in a while. I am hoping that, you know, maybe Friday or by next Tuesday I can get uh, started on re-upping the tier list now since the seasons have kind of settled. Uh, but I do just want to thank you guys for all the support. Um, and if you have seen multiple videos of the channel and do enjoy the content, if it is helpful, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. It would mean the world. All right, so let's get into it, right? So the main discourse I want to get into is around this fella right here, uh, Cal Ripken, the Captain Boost. I have used him since he came out, pretty much. Um, the problem is he is 320K, so I am sorry to say that the ship has probably sailed for most of you guys. So you can see this is what gets boosted with him. Uh, really, you're just looking at the Tier 3, maybe the Tier 2, uh, but the Tier 3 is where you want to be, right? 10 contact right, 15 left. Five fielding, 10 clutch, uh, just absolutely huge numbers, monumental numbers for certain cards in the game. Um, in general, I would probably run my God Squad with these same cards anyway. Um, it is just crazy coincidence that, you know, a lot of the best cards in the game also get this boost. Um, and so for that reason, you're pretty much going to see them on every God Squad. Um, you can have this team and have a God Squad, but to have a top-end God Squad, competitive God Squad, uh, you basically have to be running this Ripken, and I will run you through and show you why. Um, and if you pay attention to the little wheel in the middle, you're going to see uh, Griffey maxed, Mickey maxed, Acuna maxed. This is Bellinger. You can't see him. He's off cam. Maxed. Uh, Adley maxed. Trout basically maxed. Ellie maxed. J-Ram basically maxed. Um, and then some good bench options. Uh, Tucker basically maxed. If you really like his swing, it's there. Corbin Carroll, maxed. Cruz, maxed. Um, and then you can see everybody else that's eligible. Austin Riley, maxed. Matt Olson becomes usable. Um, before that, he's probably not even usable. Um, Juan Soto becomes probably the best DH in the game, depending on if you want to wildcard somebody or not. Uh, Simeon becomes debatably the best second baseman in the game. Um, Justin Morneau becomes debatably the best first baseman in the game. Um... Grady Sizemore, if you really like this card, this is probably the only way to keep him viable up until this point in the season. Uh, Corey Seager is a core card, becomes Babe Ruth Jr. with the boost. I mean, it is absolutely insane. You haven't been able to see those because I have had my camera in the way. Uh, but just imagine that's what all the wheels look like for the most part. They are all maxed. Um, it is absolutely insane. I'll run back through them. Tucker, this is what he looks like with no parallels. This is what Austin Riley looks like. Matt Olson looks like, Juan Soto looks like, um, Simeon looks like that. Morneau is basically Max. I have no parallels on a lot of these guys. This is what Sizemore looks like. Um, the new Bobby Witt looks like this. Um, who else would be a very good card? Um, Whit Merrifield, if you could deal with him never being able to touch a lefty, it looks like this. I mean, it is, it is such an insane boost. The new... Um, Edward Julian looks like this looks like one of the best second basemen in the game with the Ripken boost. I mean, it is just, it is absolutely, um, insane what it can do for a team. Um, which brings me back to the initial questions that I get asked a lot. What is the boost? I think I answered that. Um, should I do the boost? And really it depends, right? If you are somebody that struggles immensely on the hall of fame and it's not due to timing reasons, it's due to just the smaller and constricted PCI. Um, then maybe it's worth it for you. 300k is a lot, but if you're rocking a god squad like this, chances are you probably have about 300k. Um, and if you don't, then there's some budget options, right? You could sell off your Mickey Mantle that you probably hit bad with anyway, um, and go get like Dylan Cruz and then grind out some of these team affinities to get some of these other cards that also get boosted. Um, and you would still have a absolutely top end squad that is boosted by the Rip and Boost. Um, but where I think the real value of this lies is if you are a consistent legend player like myself, um, it is so invaluable to step up to the plate and have a maxed size PCI 
every single time you step in the box. I mean, the lowest contact in my starting lineup is what? Trout at 123. Realistically, it'll probably be Marte at 118 um, because I will be bringing him in to play second for Ripken. I'm not going to leave him out of position. Uh, but, I mean, just absolutely insane what you can achieve on those higher difficulties with the Ripken boost. If you are somebody that really struggles on Legend or you really struggle on Hall of Fame and it's not due to timing reasons, it's due to how small the PCI is, um, the Ripken boost is very valuable. You're going to see it on every top in God squad. Um, and it is well worth its weight in gold, so much so that a lot of people are talking about wildcarding him. I'm sure when the season turns over and the season ends and he's not technically eligible anymore, um, some people are going to wildcard him. Most people won't. They'll probably drop him. His price will drop. If you do want to look into it then, um, he could be worth wildcarding. He will probably lose some value. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to point out an alternative that is a little cheaper. Um your friend Kyle had to tweet out and just send his price to the moon, unfortunately for a lot of you guys. Um, but I did. I've had him forever. Um, and he is probably the second best captain boost in the game. And he's core, um, which means he's going to be eligible the rest of the year. Will he be as useful? Probably not, right? This is the team that you're looking at right now with the Rollins boost, who is probably second best. Um, and you can see it is a very good team, but you do make some concessions. Um, you're not going to see Trout. You're not going to see any true outfielders. They're always going to be in the secondary. And when you think about how many infielders play outfield spots, it's pretty limited um, overall. Mookie might would get the boost if they decide to give him shortstop secondary. I don't know if they would go about doing that or not. But this is basically the team. Um, it is a very similar boost. Um, I'm not going to have the camera. You're only missing 10 contact left. Is what you guys are not seeing. You can see it gives speed instead of the fielding that the Ripken boost gives. Um, so that's the five boost at the end for having the max tier. Um, and the real value of the Rollins boost is it makes these guys, like J-Ram in the outfield, is about a bang on average outfielder. But you give him the Ripken boost, or the Rollins boost, you give him that plus five speed. You can see super factors. He's going to have 94 speed. That turns him into what I would define as probably an average outfield defender, maybe slightly above average, to absolutely elite. Um, he's going to be probably better than Buck O'Neill out there just because of the speed difference. Um, he's going to cover so much ground. I mean, this is basically Acuna. That's basically Acuna's speed. It's one less. Um, so he is absolutely great out there defensively now, whereas before he was average. And then you flip you know, the field and go over here to Marte, um, who is definitively a below-average outfield defender, um, you give him the boost, he gets five more speed, he becomes pretty much average. He's fine over there. Um, you know, you add the parallels up. If he's super fractured, you're looking at 88 speed, decent reaction, really good arm, um, and decent overall fielding. Um, and unlike him not getting the Ribcon boost, he does benefit from the Rollins boost contact-wise. Um, so you can see he is a max contact guy. He's going to have that good switch hitting swing. Um, same goes for J-Ram. J-Ram, you know, benefits a little less from this boost um, than the other one, but defensively it's night and day. And then you get some of that versatility um, that you didn't really have with the Ripken boost. I still think the Rollins boost is worse. I'm not trying to justify that it is actually better. Um, but you can look at this. Um, you can see you have... David Wright, who's eligible, who was not eligible for the other team. Ellie still gets this boost. If you did buy that Ellie and that's make or break for you, he gets this boost. Um, Rollins himself is actually kind of playable. Would I play him? Probably not. Um, but he is at least playable, whereas I don't think Ripken's playable at all. Um, you can see Josh Donaldson is an absolute monster with this boost. If you enjoyed Josh Donaldson um, at the beginning of last season, or you're still using him, and you're starting to realize that contact is a little low, um, this turns him into an absolute beast. And unlike the Ribcon boost, you get two spots that cannot be boosted by the cap, the captain boost, and you will still get the full like tier uh, rewards, attribute boost, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can see we have Mickey and Adley in here. If you wanted to have Mauer in here, anybody, anybody that's not eligible for this boost, um, if you'd rather have like Trout instead of like uh, Chipper as a DH, which I didn't even mention, right? Chipper makes this team. 
Um, Chipper does not make the durability team. You would have to, you know, bench somebody or deal with not getting the max tier boost. Um, just absolutely insane, right? Chipper's one deficiency was probably that he wasn't really that fast. You give him five speed, I mean, he's basically the perfect card. He's definitely the best card in the game, uh, for sure. And then you see these bench options, not as strong as the Ripken team. I would not say there are as many, you know, good other options like there are with the Ripken team. But this Trevor Story, basically unusable past All-Star, becomes a usable card up until, like, late Hall of Fame difficulty, probably, with this boost. Um, Jackie does not benefit from the boost, but you can see he contributes to it. So if you really like Jackie, um, Bobby Witt probably benefits more from this boost. He's getting more contact against righties, um, losing a little bit against lefties. Um, the fielding isn't there, but honestly, a bare minimum gold shield compared to a mediocre silver shield. Probably going to play about the same for you. Um, you can see Seager's probably a little worse off with this boost, but he does get some speed, which is nice. And then you've got all these guys that are eligible. Lux, if you like Lux. Um, you know, probably wouldn't run. Jeter also gets this boost, obviously. Uh, Rhino, Arias. I know a lot of people like this Arias guard. He's not going to benefit too much from it. But another guy, right? If you are somebody that liked playing Arias in the outfield, um, this boost would definitely help him defensively in the outfield. He is by far a below average outfielder. Uh, you give him this boost, it's definitely going to help him out a little bit. Simeon also gets this boost. Um, these rookies I haven't really looked over. This dude looks kind of like a monster with the boost. Um, about bang on average, but another guy that you can put in the outfield. Uh, you know, you give him 86 speed with the boost. If you really like him, give him super factor. He's up to 91. That's pretty wild. Um, it makes a lot of these cards more viable. Um, Ezekiel Duran over here will basically be maxed out against varieties. Um We'll have max clutch. We'll be even faster. I mean, if this was a monthly card that you were balling on budget and you really liked, um, it turns him into a very usable card. Uh, Wander gets faster. 93, you're talking about 98 speed. If you really did like this Wander card, it could take him over the top. Um, the new Isaac Paredes, um, you know, the main dilemma with this card is the fact that he does not have a lot of contact. So I'll read the wheel to you guys because I obscured it with my camera. Uh, he's at 101, 105 with the Ripken boost. That is more than enough for Hall of Fame. That's before you count parallels. I believe he has some decent quirks. Um, that car gets very good. Um, you know, this Lindor, if you really like the other Lindor, you could run this Lindor. Would he be great? I don't know. But on the wheel right now, he has 115.93. That is playable. If you are somebody that really likes Lindor swing in the game, if you really like that set one card, but you don't want to go out of your way to wild card him, uh, obviously he would work with this team if you'd rather wild card him. For me, I'd much rather have Chipper. Um, this one is a replacement level Lindor card that is very good. Um, and then I'm sure I'm missing some others, man. And this Chope, this Jonathan Chope would be unbelievable with this boost. Look at that. Or you can't see it again. 124, 125. Um, with maxed out clutch. I mean, crazy card. We'll have 69 speed with the boost because I have him P2. Um, you know, do some quick math. He'll have, what, 72 speed. Um, turns out Jonathan Chope into debatably the best second baseman in the game. Um, I mean, there's just there's so many crazy cards and possibilities with these captain boosts right now. And the great thing about Rollins is it's a one-time investment, and you don't ever have to worry about it again. Um because he's core. He's a core card. He's going to be here for the rest of the year. It's so obvious that we will continue to get players that have shortstop secondaries in the future. Um, I'm sure we're due like a 99 award winner, like Silver Slugger Trevor Story at some point. Um, Yount will probably get a better card eventually. I would hope Rhino gets a better card eventually. Um, and then who knows who they want to give shortstop secondaries to in the future. If Mookie actually gets a good card that has shortstop secondary, it's over. I mean, this Mookie card, right? I'll slot him in real quick. 102, 108 with 115 against both sides power-wise. Actually get some speed with the Ripken, or the Rollins boost. Um, looks like, you know, probably the best power-hitting second baseman in the game. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's a lot of value in having one of these. Um, you can see Rollins is up a lot. 
when I had thought of doing this video, he was like 100K, 80K, something like that. Um, and then Kyle had the tweet saying he's going to go to 400K. Do I believe that will happen? No. Um, if he ever gets that high, I, I think he's already probably too high, um, I would expect the flash sale that will bring these core captains back, like Jimmy Rollins, Babe Ruth, Randy. Um, if you do want to wait for the possibility of that, um, it could definitely tank his price. He might not go to zero, um, but he will be, you know, significantly less. He will be less than 60K if a new flash sale comes out. Um, as for Ripken, if you do want to think about wild carding him, if your team is constructed of guys that will benefit immensely from the Ripken boost, and I'm, I assume we'll keep getting guys, I'll assume SDS is probably going to get lazy for the rest of the year, and a lot of guys are going to come out with 99 durability when Ripken isn't like a mainstay in everybody's lineup and there's not at the forefront of SDS's mind. They'll probably give a lot of people 99 durability down the road. Could be a very good wild card. Um, but that being said, when the season expires, I would look for his price to go down a lot. He should be less than 200K, probably less than 150K by the end of the season, uh, if you do want to wait for that. Um, also worth mentioning, consider selling. Um, you know, if you are good on your ranked games, if you're not worried about it, uh, if you're not trying to save these cards for, like, co-op or casual or the outside chance we get an event that will let you use prior set cards, Selling somebody like this Mickey Mantle right now would not be a bad idea. You can see he's 400k right now. I bought mine back at 250. I think I sold them to get Ellie, and then I bought him back at like 250. I can take a nasty profit, but I kind of want to have the card for if I want to wild card it or um, co-op reasons for me personally. But if you guys are done with your ranked split, if you're not worried about it, um, new split refreshes on Friday. If you want to run all your games up get to where you want to be, and then sell them, um, I would not blame you at all. This card was 490 k a couple days ago. Um, he's going to go down. When the season runs rolls over, uh, we saw it happen with the Griffey, the Trout last season. Those were like some of the top wild card options. They plummeted. They rebounded a little bit when people realized they would probably be good options to steal wild card, um, but they, they do tank. So be careful of mickey those last 20 days of this season he is probably gonna go down the toilet um i would expect him to probably be 220 260 somewhere in that range towards the end of the season um so if you do just want to take your stubs now and you know uh thug it out with like griffey in center or like dylan cruz in center or corbin carroll until then um those are solid options but yeah guys i i just i wanted to talk about captain I think they are so valuable. I think they're really overlooked. If you are somebody who's already fielding a top-end team, or if you want a ball on a budget and you don't really want to go out of your way and get like Ellie and Mickey, if you can't afford all of these crazy high-end cards, um, just buying like the Ripken and then making you know lower-tier cards be as good as those other ones uh, has a lot of value. So, yeah, guys, just want to talk about this. Till next time, peace.